The next networking component that we will emulate in Python is an ARP cache. So ARP caches are simply just a table of IP addresses versus MAC addresses. And whenever a host or a router or a firewall or anything else wants to communicate with an IP address that is on the same subnet as itself, it will go in and consult its ARP cache to figure out which MAC address to put on that layer two header. So that relationship between one value and another is something that we can build in Python using dictionaries. As we will be coding our ARP cache here, you'll also learn about F strings and looping over dictionaries. It is slightly different from looping over lists because we have to handle two columns of this table at the same time. So let's dive into that. The basis of the ARP cache here will be a collection of hosts. And I'll define this as a dictionary. And you can see that with the curly braces right here. Inside of curly braces in Python, you can define keys and values. Key colon value. That's what we can do a number of times. So key two colon value two, and so on. So you can consider this as nested variables inside of a container and sort of like a table where you have a key in one column and a value in another. So keys would usually be strings. And I think for an ARP cache, it would be a good idea to use an IP address as the key because that one is always well known. The machine down here knows which IP address it's going to send a packet to, but it just has to figure out the MAC address to put into that frame. So the value would be a good place to keep that MAC address and then make the mapping between them. So let's just create some entries for that. So the ARP cache here has six entries. Each of them has an IP address and a MAC address. The IP address is the key. And whenever we want to find a MAC address, we can just ask for it by using the IP address. So let me open the Python repo here. This is the CLI of Python where you can type in any Python code and see the result of it. So I'll just paste in my hosts dictionary and print it back out. So in exactly the same way as with the list, uh, you see that the output is not exactly identical to my input and that's because I have some freedom with the way that I'm formatting my code. I prefer to have each entry on one line each. It makes it more readable. But internally in Python, it's more condensed, uh, but the contents is still the same. We always have a key followed by a colon and a value and then a comma to separate the next pair of uh, items here, the next key value pair. If this gets a bit too difficult to read, you can actually pretty print this in Python by importing the pprint function. And that makes it a bit more readable, but the contents is still exactly the same. It just now includes the line breaks as well. So if we want to access one of these values, we need to provide the key to the dictionary for Python to look it up. So let's say that I want to print out the MAC address of this IP address. Then I supply that in the same way that I did with a position on a list, but with my dictionary here, these are string based keys. So I need to put in my quotes there and then I simply just get the value. So you see, instead of working with numbered positions that can be a bit difficult to handle and remember what really means, uh, then adding strings as my keys makes a lot more sense because it provides some context to what I'm actually trying to access. The script that I'm creating over here will just be a single lookup into the ARP table. So I'll just print my welcome message here. and I'll receive the IP address as input from the user. Then I can use that input as my key to access a value up here. So let's say the user enters 172.16.0.32. I want to assign the corresponding MAC address to a new variable. And I do that with the same syntax that I used over here in my rebel demonstration. 
So I just need to provide a key, but instead of a static string, I'm receiving this as input. So it means that that string is now stored in my IP address variable, and I'm using that as my key. And then I'm referencing that as my key. Let's simply just print out the MAC address for now, and let's check if things are working as expected. All right, which IP address to look up? There we go. I get a result back. So Python was looking through all of these entries until it found a matching key, and then it returned the value of that entry. So instead of only printing the MAC address, let's put some more context around that. And do the lookup again. And now I see my message here, the host IP address 172.16.32 maps to MAC address, so and so. That's all good. So you can combine strings using the plus sign and you can do that over and over as many times as you like. But when you have good variable names like this one, MAC address and IP address, which is quite clear, then it's better to use a formatted string because it'll make your code look more readable. So let me just copy this one uh, for comparison. And then I'll change this one to an F string, which means that it is formatted. It means that I don't need to open and close my string all the time. But I can simply use curly brackets to indicate that there are placeholders for variables. And your code editor will highlight this for you by using a different font color uh, right here for the variables that acts as placeholders. So I think that line 15 is more readable than line 17 right here. Um, so let's just delete 17. This only works if you have an F in front of the string. It's a formatted string. But using it will do two things for you. It'll create more readable code and it'll also act as a reminder for you to use very good variable names because then code like line 15 here will be very easy to read. So let's put a check mark to F strings over here on our checklist. So what happens if we enter an IP address that is not known in the ARP cache? So 172.16.0.2 is not in my entries here, and I hit enter, then I get a key error. So key error is exactly right, because this key doesn't exist. So Python throws an error. So when we use a dynamic string that we actually don't know the contents of when we write our code, then a safer way to access a dictionary element would be to use the .get method. So in here, I would put the same key name, but dot get acts differently from simply just using the square brackets, because if this key doesn't exist, it'll just return an empty response. And you can see the result here. So the host IP address maps to MAC address none. So none is a special data type in Python that's simply just empty. It doesn't represent anything but at least it doesn't throw an error. But I think we should give the user a better message than, than this by creating an if statement. And we can do that in a very simple way with if MAC address. So if there is contents in this variable and it's not none, then we'll print the status message. In any other cases, I'll make another F string and print it out. The host IP address is not found. I think that looks a little better. I think that along with this message, we could also print the entire ARP table just to show our user here what's actually available so they don't make the same mistake again.
So if an ARP entry is not found in the cache, then our host machine will have to send out an ARP request. And as it does that, then it populates its local ARP cache with an incomplete entry. So I will add a new entry into my dictionary up here on the fly with Python, and I can access that with square brackets. So this key that was non-existing right now, the IP address, I can assign a new value to it. And in that process, I'm also creating the key. So I'm creating the key and the value at the same time. So let's set it to incomplete. I'll just add some spaces here for formatting. You, we'll get back to that in a moment, but it'll, it'll make it look nicer, I promise you. So that's actually all you need to know about the basics of dictionaries. So let's set a check mark there. Now I wanted to print out the ARP table. So let's just do a header here, show IP ARP on the output. And then I'll print it out in a Cisco iOS style. With some column headers. And then I would like to loop around. So let's just see how the output looks so far. If I put in a valid IP address, I simply get the MAC address back as expected. If I put in an unknown IP address, I get my error message from before then I would like to make some output that resembles a show IP ARP from an iOS device. So I now have the column headers here. I need to loop through my entire dictionary of hosts and print out the IP address and MAC address of each of them. So to loop through collections, we use the for loop just like with lists, but this time I have two variables to unpack for every time I have an iteration because I have a key and a value for each of these entries. So I'll just comma separate them here in the for loop. And then I'll access the items of this dictionary. And the items method is what returns one element at a time in a way that they can be unpacked into two different variables. So cached IP and cached Mac will have different values for every iteration of this for loop. And then I'm adding new indentation here because I want a new code block where I simply just print out yet another F string. Containing the cached Mac and the cached IP. So this other part of the string is just something that I put in there statically to resemble the uh, the output from a show IP ARP on a Cisco device. So that's just to make it look nice. Let's see here. Oh, cached Mac is not defined. All right, and I had a, a typo up here. So let's just correct that and try again. All right. So now I actually have my ARP table here printed out. And in that way, we are emulating the operations of the ARP cache. We could also build another mechanism to actually send and receive ARP requests, but I think we'll save that for another video. Right now, we just wanted to focus on learning about dictionaries, f-strings, and looping of dictionaries. So remember that when you loop through dictionaries, you have two different variables to handle, the key and the value. And to do that, you must access the dot items methods of the dictionary. So hosts is the dictionary. And then the dot symbol here represents that we are accessing something inside of that specific dictionary. And we want the items, which are pairs of keys and values one after the other. And that's passed back to the for loop that executes the code block multiple times, once for each pair of key and value. Actually, I could see that I should align my type up here. I should probably add three spaces to that to make it look even better like that. So now it's perfectly aligned. So what you could do now to experiment further would be to try and populate this ARP cache with entries that are currently not known. And what I mean by that is that you could have two different dictionaries. Maybe one of them was called all hosts 
and the other one was called my hosts. So this is the current cache. Let's just delete some of these entries right here. And then I think that you should go ahead and try to work with my hosts first. And then in all the cases where we cannot look up an existing MAC address, then we should try to populate that from the all hosts dictionary. So I'll leave that as an assignment to you to try and experiment with that.